Hello all, welcome to this lesson called how to compile and run C program on Windows. So in the previous lesson, we learned about the features and applications of C programming language. And in this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to write, compile and run your C program on Windows. So even before starting to write, compile and run our C program, we must first understand what do you mean by compilation? So let's start this lesson with a question, what is compilation? So the process of converting English like looking source code into low level binary code is called as compilation. I'll repeat once again, the process of converting human understandable English like looking high level source code into computer understandable low level binary code is called as compilation. Now you might ask me this question, Subhash, why do we actually need this compilation? Isn't it? As told in one of the earlier videos, we understand that computers cannot understand high level source code. The only language that the computers understand is the low level binary code that is written in zeros and ones. Whereas programmers cannot write code in binary language because it is highly impossible to write or instru write instructions in zeros and ones, isn't it? And that is the reason programmers make use of something called as high level programming languages to write code. It might be C, C++, Java, Python, and so on and so forth, right? But the problem here is that the computers don't understand high level source code and programmers cannot write code in binary code that is zeros and ones. And that is the reason we need an intermediate tool that can convert the source code that is written by uh, programmers to convert that into the binary code that is understandable by the CPU. And that intermediate tool is called as the compiler, right? So compiler is a tool which will actually convert the source code that is written by programmers to the code that the CPU understands. That is the binary language, right? And the whole process is called as compilation. So let me repeat, compilation is nothing but the process of converting human understandable high level source code into computer understandable low level binary code. So this process is called as compilation. Now, having understood what do you mean by compilation, let us now go write, compile and run our C program on Windows machine. So even before writing and compiling our uh, uh, C source code on Windows, we'll have to first install a software called as dev C++. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, uh, you know, this is the logo of dev C++. Okay, and we'll have to install this software. So I've given you a few features about this particular software. So let us see what are those features. First one is that dev C++ is an IDE software, right? Now, what do you mean by IDE software? IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. It means that this software, this IDE software comes with pre-built compiler, pre-built editor, pre-built uh, debugger, and also all kinds of runtime uh, libraries which are needed, pre-built or predefined library functions that are needed for us to run our C programs successfully. And this ID makes it, uh, makes the life of every programmer so easy, my dear friends, right? So one more advantage of dev C++ is that we don't need to install compiler separately, editor separately, debugger separately, or any kind of library separately. It means just by installing this software, all these tools comes pre-installed along with the software so that we can directly run, uh, compile and run our C programs, you know, directly and successfully. So that is the reason we are going to learn how to run our C program on dev C++. For that, we'll have to first install dev C++ on our computer, right? So I'm going to show you how to install dev C++ and also write and compile and run our C programs using dev C++ ID software, okay? So let's get started. Now, first, uh, you can open your favorite browser, any of your favorite browser, and you can search for dev C++ software download for Windows 10. Okay, so you can, uh, you if, if you're using a Windows 10 machine, you can uh, say Windows 10, or if you're using any other version of Windows, you can just say uh, that particular version. You can just key in that particular version of Windows. So I just click on enter key, and I'm going to select the first link that appeared on my search results page. So it is from a website called uh, sourceforge.net. Okay, so I'm just clicking on that. And you can see a big green button, which says download. So I'm going to click on that download and it immediately begins downloading the software, right? So your download will start shortly is what it says, right? Yes, as you can see over here, the download has actually started. So let's wait for the download to complete uh, fully, right? Yes, I think it has been uh, 
download it completely. Let me go and check that. Yes, I have my uh, Dev C++ software uh, in, uh, not downloaded. So I'm double clicking on it so that it will be installed on my computer. So it asks me, should I make changes? Yes, you can make changes to my computer. Okay, as you can see, the, down, the installation has already started. Please wait while setup is loading. Okay. So it is asking me to select a preferred language. I'll keep English as it is. Okay. And it asks me for agreeing to the terms and conditions. I say agree and which choose which features of Dev C++ 5.11 you want to install. Okay, I'm not going to touch anything over here. Let, it, let me keep this as default. Okay, and then say next. And it gives me a destination folder where my uh, all my installation files are going to be installed. I'll keep it as it is and then say install. Okay, as you can see, the installation has, all, has started. So let's wait for this installation to get completed. Yes, I think the installation is complete. I'll just say finish, okay. I'm going to close this browser. Okay, then it says me select your language. Okay, English and the rest I'm going to add the theme. Okay, I'm going to have the default theme next and just say okay. And you can see that the editor is open, right? The Dev C++ editor is open. I'm going to just close this now and just see if this has been installed on my desktop. I just want to cross verify. Yes, as you can see on my desktop, okay, the logo of Dev C++ is there. It means that Dev C++ has been installed on my desktop. I'm going to double click on it. I'm opening it, okay? And now it gives me an editor over here. Okay, I mean, it has opened a window. Okay, I have to now open an editor so that I can edit my C programs. So I click on file, okay? And then there's an option called new. It says new source file. Okay, I click on new source file. And now it opens my editor where I can actually write my C program. Okay, so let me write a simple C program. Don't worry if you don't understand anything in this program that I'm writing. It's absolutely okay because in my next videos, I'm going to explain you C program from scratch. Okay, this is only for testing purpose, just to show you how to compile and run your C program. So hash include history.h int main int main. Right, and then I'm going to just say printf hello buddies. Hello buddies. Okay, and then I'm going to give you an option return zero, right? So I've written my C program. So now after writing my C program, this is a high level source code. I'll have to compile and run this code. Either I can compile it separately or I can compile and run it together. So how do I do that? I go to this, uh, you know, menu called as a tab called as execute. I'm clicking on this. Uh, execute, it asks me whether should I compile this program or should I run this program or should I compile and run it? Okay, so I'm going to uh, uh, click on compile and run. You can try various other options over here. Once the class is over, you can actually, after, after watching this video, while you are doing it by yourself, you can just try out all different options. For now, I'll just say compile and run. It might ask me to save my program first. Let us check this out. Okay, compile and run. Yes, it is asking me to save this uh, program that I've written. So it says untitled one. What kind of file is it? It says save as type. Okay, mine is a C program. So I would select dot C because all C programs have to be saved in a file with dot small c extension. And I've just saved it as a dot C and I'm going to give a name to it. I'm just going to give it as my first program or uh, let me give it as a, a compile and run program. Compile and run program. Okay, I'll just say compile and run and then say save. Where is it saving? It is saving on the desktop. Just say save. And once it is saved, okay, it says there is an error. Okay, it says there is an error. Did you see that once I compile this program, it is not compiling successfully. It gives me an error. So what's the problem? It says expected semicolon before return. Okay, yes, as you can see here, I have not included the semicolon. Okay, now I've included my semicolon over here as the end at the end of printf function. Now it should be able to run a uh, compile and run successfully, right? So compile and run once again. And as you can see, okay, the output window has appeared. Okay, the program is running and we got the output called as hello buddies, which I actually printed it over, which I used it in printf. Okay, so this is the output of my program and this is how you compile and run your C program, my dear friends, right? So more about C program, how to write, how to start, okay, what do you mean by hashing, what do you mean by main function and all that, I'll be discussing in a uh, late upcoming uh, videos. So don't worry about that. For now, your the motto of this lesson was to show you how to use this Dev C++ editor to uh, write, compile and run your uh, C program. Hope you understood how to use this editor.
editor. So you can uh, make use of this editor in a more uh, better way once we actually start the actual course on C programming, my dear friends. Okay, having said that, hope you enjoyed today's session. Okay, so if so, then um, thanks for watching. I would uh, definitely request you to uh, you know uh, subscribe to my channel and also click on the like uh, uh, button. And I also I want you to click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of my further updates on this C programming tutorial series. Okay, so thank you once again. So meet you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye bye. Love you all so much.